going on, Jerome's? Happy Tuesday. Birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. He sees you when you're pooping. So, team is back at TCO for Performance Center Bar and Grill, and it appears that everyone behaved over the bye week. Hmm. Uh, someone who's busy over the bye week was the Vikings Entertainment Network. So th they put out two awesome videos, one of Quasey, one of Kevin O'Connell. Uh, one is KOC addressing the team before the start of the season. We're perfectly fine with nobody talking about the Minnesota Vikings, and they're going to be effing talking about guys in this room very soon. All right, And also Quasey with the uh, – not, not about what other people think about us. So the, the team definitely went hard in the paint on the no one respects this card during the bye week because, I mean, around the league, they they don't. Uh, everyone's talking up, ooh, the Lions, ooh, the Packers, even ooh, the Bears. Oh, my. All, right, all, all this hype and talk about the NFC Norris division, and it's okay. Vikings are 5-0. and They're playing complete team football, and they're going to silence a lot of the haters and the losers on Sunday after the Lions roll into town. It's going to be good, man. Uh, like I said, the Vikings had a walkthrough on Monday. Uh, I, I don't think that there's going to be an injury report because those are uh, exclusively for Wednesday through Friday practices officially. Uh, but uh, a, a good sign is that a, a Ron Jones is not back on the field. Kevin Seifert, ESPN, who is not Carl Gerbsmith. Uh, Aaron Jones' hip was on the practice field today, a light bonus session coming out of the bye. Uh, I, still won't say, uh, I still won't say it's a lock that he'll play Sunday. So... I, with Kevin O'Connell, like they've always been very cautious with injuries. Frankly, it wouldn't shock me if he missed this week and maybe even a short week uh, next week against the Rams, which is fine. I mean, get Jones back to 100% and don't put him in a spot where it could aggravate it, make it worse, uh, make it even more serious. But uh, Jones is out there. He was doing the Billy White Shoes Johnson, you know, knee knocks. It, it was good, man. So, uh, Jones, I mean, Jones is very important to this offense, and frankly, the Vikings should look to add some talent in the backfield. I, I like Ty Chandler, but can he be the 1-1 one, one guy? I don't know. I don't know, man. Another 1-1 one, one guy is Blake Cashman outside. How about that? Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, he was not practicing today. Andrew Kramer Strib. Uh, he's working with the trainer on the side field, uh, right calf wrap. So, it's a bad sign uh, coming out of the bye week, but we'll see once official practices start Wednesday through uh, Friday, and we'll see if there's any designation uh, with uh, Cashman. But, as you've seen, you know, with veterans, especially on defense, uh, players can be limited all three days or even DNP one day limited to uh, and still be good to go on Sunday. But something to monitor uh, with Cashman. Also monitoring is come on up for the Reisner, Dalton Reisner. The kick started uh, my heart. 21-day practice window started on Monday. Uh, his return does st sync up with the Colts game uh, coming up in three weeks on November 3rd. And it probably will take – your 21 days as Reisner has come back from that back injury to get him uh, into football shape and good to go. But frankly, th this is really, really good because I I'm still concerned about Ed Ingram at right guard. And th they did have Reisner working at right guard during training camp. Blake Brandle has been fantastic at left guard uh, aside from some penalties. So hopefully uh, th this will suture up the Vikings here offensive line for the stretch run. Also, Mike Florio, it's not a thermos. All right, so speaking of stretches, uh, th this trade idea is a bit of a stretch. Now, we on this channel are famous, as Moy Famoso, for putting out every single trade option out there. But th this one is a little bit far-fetched even for me. PFT, will Matthew Stafford be a potential trade candidate? And he goes into a diatribe of, as a trade deadline, blah, 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 Stafford. Rams, blah, 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 blah. Where was it? Ah, uh, at the bottom. If, for example, the Jets provided a, a blueprint for making Sling and Sam Darnold look mortal, or the Jets have one of the best defenses in the league and it was in the rain and lost Aaron Jones, right? Uh, the Vikings will be wise if they lose the Lions and then to Stafford's Rams to at least entertain the possibility of an upgrade. Coincidentally, Vikings coach Kevin O'Connell and Stafford worked together for a year in LA and they both won a Super Bowl ring for their efforts. So basically, they're, they're saying, hey, if Darnold turns into a pumpkin, which I don't think that he will over the next couple of weeks, uh, they should make a move and reunite Stafford with Kevin O'Connell. I guess stranger things have happened, but I don't I don't see it. Well, number one, the Rams, even though they may be in tank mode, like they're not going to give away Stafford for for a song. Right. So are you going to trade a first round pick for a quarterback who, who's probably going to retire at the end of the season? Mm, nah. Nah. I'd rather roll the dice with Darnold. And now I don't think that the Jets found out a blueprint. I think that 
how come how come Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson like they can have a down game? Jordan Love, C.J. Stroud, like they can have uh, Joe Burrow, they can have an off game, but Sam Darnold has to be perfect every single week. Or oh, the sky's falling. It's stupid and ridiculous. Mm. Uh, something that might not be stupid is Patrick Peterson open to return to Minnesota. Now P squared uh, played a couple seasons here uh, with the Vikings, 2021, 2022, and he's a future Hall of Famer. R- respect him. Certainly has lost a step over the years, but, you know, pr- provided some solid cornerback play for the Vikings for a couple seasons. Uh, but he's on the Zach Gelb show. Uh, I would like I would like to be there, too. Peters responded when asked about a return to Minnesota. I love the coaching staff there. Coach Kevin, uh, he was uh, on board the Vikings the first year of the Kevin O'Connor regime. Had an opportunity to build a solid relationship over the nine months that I was, uh, I was with him. Uh, it's just a great feel and a great organization to be around. A great guys to be around and show up to, to go to work uh, with every day. At 34, Peterson would match Stephon Gilmore. I believe it's Mr. Gilmore's. As the oldest player in an already aged Minnesota cornerback room, he's been on since the end of last season, but is still training, keeping an open mind about potential return to the NFL. Uh, quote, I'm still leaving the book open. I'm still training, Peterson told Gelb. I'm still working out because my mind is still in it. It's not like I cannot physically play or I feel like I can't physically give my best. I feel like I still have enough in the tank to help a team win. But that decision is out of my hands. So for the most part, I'm doing everything that I, I need to do just in case the phone does ring. Now, <sighs> Like I said, I, I love me some Patrick Peterson, and I respect what he gave to the Vikings after things didn't work out in Arizona, but nah. Uh, unless it's an absolute minimum prorated deal for the rest of the year, and P-Square doesn't mind playing special teams. Because, I mean, if he comes in, he's going to be cornerback five, five or six, right? So, eh. I, frankly, I, I don't see it happening, but like we said, stranger things uh, have happened. Uh, speaking of... When the Vikings beat the Texans' ass week three, no no big deal. Uh, Sling and Sam Darnold look great, but D'Amico, D'Amico, we need to have a medical check on D'Amico because I, I think he's suffering from uh, short-term memory loss, right? Uh, Will Kunkel, Fox affiliate down in Houston, D'Amico Ryans, Jordan Love, uh, the Texans play the Packers this week, uh, Jordan Love will be the best quarterback we face this year. Oh, really? Oh, really? Because I seem to remember... A certain quarterback just putting the full-on Darjeeling blend full tea bag on the Texans and his vaunted defense for four touchdowns. I seem to remember 34 points put the bank thing on that vaunted defense. Hmm. I feel like the red-headed deity was pretty, pretty, pretty good. But no, 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 Jordan Love is much better than than four touchdowns and 34 points. Okay, we'll see. We'll see, man. Sure, what, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the Jordan Love and the Packers. The Cricket Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams playing the bottom three defenses in the league over the last three weeks, and the Lions who haven't beaten anyone over 500. Okay, it's okay. Like the media is really loving this dog and pony show of like oh, the NFC North is the best division. I do not care in the slightest. Right. So the Vikings take care of your business against the Lions, beat their ass, shut up the narratives of like oh here come the Lions, oh Super Bowl favorite, oh blah blah blah. Nah. The Vikings, out of sight, out of mind during the bye, they can shut up a lot of haters and losers on Sunday. Just got to get it done. Uh, but that's it. Your thoughts are thoughts of Vikings News Dump this beautiful Tuesday. You're the best you know what to do. Skull, production value.